Okay, Manix fans, take a look at the front license plate, and you will see California Manix. The reason why I uh, put that on there is I was looking for the front plate for the car when I bought it, and I saw that on uh, eBay, and I thought, wait a minute, that's the perfect plate for that car. And uh, and it is funny. For those of you that remember uh, uh, Mr. Connors in the Manix series, he drove a green, dark green 68 dart this is a red 67 uh, hypo 273 but super nice car just very well done i can't believe that someone took the time to restore this car the way it is restored and they left off the black paint and, and, and factory paint treatments and just kept the front end on it look at that it's like so shiny i've uh, so far left it alone um, I can take it off and do the, the factory paint treatment on it, but I'm not so sure that I actually want to. I might just uh, leave it the way it is. I don't know yet. But uh, take a look at this thing. It is supremely clean. It's very well done. It's sorted out. It drives beautiful. It is one of the most beautiful running little cars that I have. And even though it's a little Bulldog 273 four-barrel from the factory, um, it's no 340, as you all know, but it is pretty. And it has those crazy uh, valve covers on there with the fins on them. And then the uh, the previous owner had the car that when the engine was rebuilt, they put on the TTI exhaust, which is like supremely beautiful and still looking wonderful. So uh, that's going to stay. Uh, I'm not going to put manifolds on it. I'm just going to keep those beautiful headers on there and leave the car as it appears right here, which I finished here in the engine bay. And uh, But I still need to do some work on the interior uh, I painted the rear seat because it was just dilapidated but I've got too white of a paint as you can see it's too stark white so now I've got the correct um, actually 67 Dodge color I'm gonna do all three seats um, I believe those should be good um, those have the same color as the tonneau cover but then the seats will be more in line with that tonneau cover but anyway let's take a look and that way the vehicle will all agree color-wise, which is the way it came from the factory. Um, this convertible has torque boxes front and rear. Uh, Chrysler wasn't messing around. And remember, even though this is just a little 273 four-barrel, they put the big rally spring packs on it back there. They don't look, they look kind of uh, dilapidated, but they're still, you know, you don't need uh, shocks. They're still good. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, I plan on actually reshooting those and shining up everything under here. So, check out the tail panel. It's really beautiful on this car. And per 67 Dart GT, that's an, a, a very well, good condition, original piece on there. Um, and everything else is basically re, uh, you know, repop stuff, but. Look how nice it looks. These 67 Dodge convertibles, this was the first year of this body style. And essentially what you were doing was ordering a car um, that looked like it's bigger brothers, like a satellite or a coronet. Um, but you were getting the smaller economy car. And these things sold like hotcakes, folks. I mean, they really went into some big volume. And the reason being is because the predecessor looked more like Valiant type. You could clearly an economy car. They had no interior space. They were really not meant for families. This car became wider and a little bit longer, and they kept the same great trunk feature where the spare tire was sunk into the trunk floor, and you had more trunk space. They were more family friendly. You could actually fit a family of two or three kids into these cars with the seat belts in the back. Um, you'd have to get a hard top, but um, I'll tell you what, it's a wonderful way to go because these cars were good looking, they were economical, you could afford the payment, and uh, there was room enough for the kids. <laughs> That's what sales are made of. So anyway, um, there you have it. This one's a high performance version. This is the 273 four barrel. And uh, well, let's give it a listen. How about that? Again, it's a 4.5 liter, small 273, but it has the four barrel and the high performance, high compression treatment 
from the factory at Chrysler. So uh, let's give it a listen. Yes, you can clearly hear it's a high compression engine um, with performance characteristics, but it's just a small one and it certainly is no 340. And that goes without saying. 340 was legendary. I learned from uh, Uncle Tony's Garage, UTG on YouTube, what the 340 engine was about in these small blocks. This 273 was the first LA engine. And what they did is they got the exhaust ports to sit up high on the head um, uh, for the exhaust manifold. So that way, when the exhaust came out of the exhaust uh, valve, from the exhaust valve, it had a straight shot right out uh, with no restriction. Whereas in B bodies, you had a, a little minor built-in restriction in the heads uh, in escaping the valve gases out of there. So um, on the exhaust uh, stroke. So. These 273s were the first, and the 340 was the big improvement with free-flowing exhaust and valves, and uh, Ford discovered it too with the Boss 302 and the 351 Clevelands and, and uh, Chevy with the Z28 uh, 302s and then the 350s that came out. They could get big piston, small block engines with huge valves to give you big block performance and uh, and you would have a lighter body that handled better on the street. So that was the key feature of these cars because they were lightweight, you had a, a very stout little engine and they had a good power to weight ratio relative to other vehicles on the road. So there you have it, Gauze Garage, beautiful 67 GT convertible, rare, less than one half percent of all orders of GT models in convertible with the 273 four barrel hypo engine. Thank you.